My name is Mel Campbell. I am a motivational psychologist. I worked in my doctorate in psychology. You can call me Dr. Mel. Train yourself on success. You can make a lot of money if you study what it takes to be successful in sales. And if you do these things, you can be not only successful at sales, but also in life. We asked motivational speaker, life coach, and business trainer Mel Campbell about the psychology needed to stay motivated in a business where you have to be able to bounce back from a rejection quickly. Well, it's important that you look at your numbers and think about what am I going to do today in order to get the goal I want in the future. Mm. Every time you're a leader, your workers watch you. Mm. They watch what you do and how you act and, and all those things. They're also looking for weaknesses. So it's important that a, a manager always fill themselves. They fill themselves with what is it going to take for me to get this team motivated? And I like studying leadership. Mm. You know, leadership is all about making sure that you're doing your job the best you can and working as hard as your workers work. So it's almost the mentality of, of leading by example more exactly. than what they're saying. Exactly. So if you lead by examples, people will see there. You know, we've all had leaders in our life that we'll do anything for. Yeah. And you have to model that leadership. What's one motion that we really need to work on as a people in this country? Positivity. We need more positivity out there. So what happens with emotion, we're always having events that we tie to the past. We need to let go of our past. Some of us need to let go of our story. Now, there's a story all of you have about everything in your life, and all emotion comes with a story. You know what fear is, everyone? It's the anticipation of pain. And most of the things that you fear never happen. Public speaking is the number one fear of Americans. What would happen if you had a big project to do and you took the emotion out of it? When you do that, you can be more clear and get better results. What happens when you have a panic situation? You should never panic. You have a choice to either think a positive thought or negative thought at any given period of time. And guess who makes that choice? You do, all of the time. So you're gonna exhibit your emotions to other people. You'll see beliefs create your emotion. Our beliefs determine our reality. So you have a belief inside of you of how powerful you really are. And I believe that everybody in this room has another level they can use to get to their power. Everybody go ahead and raise your hand for me. Raise it a little higher. You see that next level? That little extra is gonna be recognized in your work. Your attitude plus your behavior determines your consequences. So write down this formula, A plus B equals C. Your attitude plus your behavior determines your consequences. Do we need more positivity in the workplace? Yes, and you can generate that. Now, how many of you work with negative people? Raise your hand. All right, negative people. Remember this, I see a lot of hands. Somebody raise the two hands up here. Please know, no one can hurt you unless you give them the power to hurt you. Come on. Clap it out. It's true. Guess who controls that? You do. Now, I'm a new father. My daughter's 10 months old. And I'm learning so much about being a parent. Being a parent is about being a role model. And it's about making sure that our emotions are showing that. Look at all the emotions we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis sometimes. Now, believe it or not, emotion is actually just a chemical reaction. You give it value, you give it power. You teach people how to treat you, is that true? If you're always coming with the same emotion as someone, you're gonna get those same results. Here's a great formula to write down as well in terms of your emotions. E plus R equals O. An event will happen which will trigger a response which will determine what? Outcome. These are the emotions that are triggered in the workplace. Does that look familiar to you? So when you're dealing with people on an ongoing basis, you really want to think about the emotions that they generate inside of you. When you recognize that emotion, you can free it and release it. Now, emotions also are part of making sure that we're listening the right way. Are we good listeners? I'm going to test you right now in 15 seconds. Okay, you're driving a bus, go to the first bus stop, pick up two kids and drop off a kid. Go to the second bus stop, pick up three kids, 
and drop off one. Go to the third bus stop, pick up four kids and drop off two. What color are the driver's eyes? <laughs> I, I hear something. The first thing I said was, you're driving the bus. Some of you are still trying to figure that out. <laughs> we are not good listeners in life. Would you agree we would have less of the divorce rate if we learned to listen? Yes. Would you agree we would get things done better if we communicated better with listening? Yeah, so what I hear you saying is, that's called active listening. So this will prevent these negative emotions to take place. And we need to do a better job of listening. That action alone will help you with guarding emotion. Can we control other people? No, believe it or not, we can influence other people, but we can't control other people. You can have that life that you desire. The first step is, everybody, write it down. Now, I am a psychologist, and I'm, I'm already in your head. I'll give you a perfect example of emotion. I want everybody to go ahead and smile for me real quick. To the person sitting left or right of you, go ahead and smile. Now this time, I want you to pretend the person sitting left and right of you has a million dollars they're going to give you. Now smile to them. <laughs> now believe it or not, you are able to control your emotion. Would you be able to live a better day if you smiled more throughout your day? Absolutely. Do you know it's much easier to generate positive energy if you smile? Now, Daniel Goldman is the leading expert on emotional intelligence. Uh, it was first discovered in 1995. And if you use emotional intelligence in the workplace, you will communicate better and you will understand things better. The people sitting next to you are communicating to you. They're communicating non-verbally. What is the person saying that they're not saying? That's emotional intelligence. Being in touch with that, understanding that.